I had my first kind of, you know, or not really my first, my second, you know, I'm going to go do this on my own epiphany. And I just said, hey, you know, part of the challenge here is we're trying to manage a network over the network. And so me and this guy, James, that I'd been traveling with, we said, hey, let's create something where we can manage the network outside the network. Let's mm-hmm. build something out of band. And we did. We started a company um, called Uplogix, uh, still around today, uh, raised venture, built product, you know, had a great run. But that was like the genesis of that moment. We were okay. like sitting there for a month going like, dang, how do we, you know, yeah. overcome this stuff? So. Wow. So since college, this is your first time going into like a true, I'm going to go start something. Yeah, and I was the boss. So right. It was really the first time. You know, I'd had the little computer company in Lubbock, but it was like, you know, no venture, yeah. not really any employees. It was like, what can I make out of it? You know, right. and this was, yeah, definitely the first time of like, you know, we've raised money. There's outside expectations. I've got expectations. We've got staff. I'm trying to lead. And yeah, I'm a yeah. you know, baby-faced kid at yeah. 22. Yeah. And so if it's still around today, then what, what was your journey with yeah, so for about four years, you know, raised a couple rounds of funding, traveled all over, sold the product, you know, went well. Uh, Citibank was an early customer and became an investor. You know, we grew it for about four years and got, you know, over seven figures in revenue and, you know, Fog was mm-hmm. going pretty good. And, you know, I think the board and the investors had a sense of, okay, this might go somewhere. Mm-hmm. And here we have this 23, you know, 24 year old kid that, mm-hmm. you know, hasn't done this before. Let's get him some help. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so they they approached me with a guy and they said, hey, you know, this guy's further down the road. He was available. And they're like, hey, why don't we like pair you guys up for a little bit? So it was kind of pitched as like a two in the box thing. Like, mm-hmm. hey, you guys are going to work together in this kind of dual CEO role. And we did for a while. And, you know, he definitely had more experience, had good ideas. So there were some, you know, headbutting along the way as, you know, the, you know, that founding product visionary t- role typically, you know, has a different level of passion for Mm-hmm. what we do and what we say no to, those kind of things. But about a year in, you know, he invited me to breakfast and said, hey, you know, met with the board and, you know, it's time you move on to something else. Wow. And there was a little bit of a, you know, hostile takeover at that point. And so, wow. um, you know, it was, and, and, it, and it was rough. Felt like I had built what we had by hand. I felt yeah. like somebody was taking it away from me. I had identity tied up in it and, you know, self-worth tied up in it. And Yeah, if you're, so this is, I mean, this is your baby, this is your first startup, first successful and um, what what was that season like for you? Like even weeks, months after yeah. that, is that like a, is it a grieving, a mourning, an anger, all the above? Like what? All the above, yeah. I think you know it's loss. You feel you know you feel loss and you know hurt, and you're second guessing and what could I have done? And I had basically recruited everybody you know in the mm-hmm. company, and so you know I was hearing back channel you know some versions of stories that, you know, weren't accurate and, you know, mm-hmm. felt like, you know, a little bit of a character attack on me. So I'm dealing with how that felt and processing, you know, mm-hmm. that. And, uh, you know, I'm also like looking back going, what did I do wrong? 